Okay. So um, thank you for joining the HKU online student sharing session. Um, for this session, we'll be quite relaxed to uh, share the experience about the hall and dining and the social lives in HKU and Hong Kong as well. So I hope to give you an idea what your life will be uh, in studying in Hong Kong U and living in Hong Kong. So first of all, um, we're going to have three lovely student ambassadors as I introduced before. Um, so for the first one, we're going to have Hashita uh, to uh, introduce her experience about this topic. Okay. Hi, Hashita. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. So I'm Hashita, mm -hmm. and I'm a year one accounting and finance student from India. And uh, I'm under the faculty of business and economics. So first, I'll be talking about the place where I stay, the halls. So I stay at Chalky Club Student Village 3, which is also known as J JCSV 3. And this is basically a group of four halls. And all of these halls are mostly for international students. So all the residents here are either non-locals or either exchange students. And uh, from JCSV3 to HKU, so the first time I came to JCSV3, I was a little confused, like, how do I reach HKU? So what uh, you have two ways. So one is you can either walk downhill to the Kennedy Town MTR station, this one right here. And from there, it takes you about five or three to five minutes to reach the HKU campus. So that's pretty fast, doesn't take a lot of time. But if you're uh, not lazy, and if you would like to walk, you can also use the Pokefield Road, which is an uphill walk. So it takes about 10 to 15 minutes of uphill walk. And I don't usually do that because that's, uh, I'm very lazy and I don't like uphill walks and I reach university faster through the MTR. Um, so in JCSV3, I stay at this, um, the blue hall, the right, the one next to the yellow one yeah that's called shanhing and um, that's where i stay so at shanhing we have 13 clubs so clubs are basically these small groups of hall uh, people who stay at the hall who do activities together so in those 13 clubs we have these sporty clubs like dragon boat racing and badminton swimming etc but we also have these leisure events which is much more casual and not so competitive um, those are like cooking dancing um, so I'm actually a part of the hiking and trekking club and the cooking club. Um, other than these, we also have these working teams which uh, run throughout the year and you're supposed to actively participate in all of their uh, activities, which is uh, we have media team, we have art and design team and event management team. So these event management teams basically organize these high table dinners, which is organized monthly. So it's a fancy dinner. So you dress fancily and have dinner with your hallmates and occasionally we also have these fun little activities organized by Shanheng. Again, it's organized by the event management team, but um, those activities are open to um, all the Shanheng residents and also sometimes people from other halls, which is actually really nice. Uh, so uh, some of these fun little activities are like uh, they we had this activity where we had to design the Halloween mask. So Halloween was like four days afterwards and we had to design a scary mask sort of but one of my most favorite one was uh, meeting Jasper so this is the picture like I'm trying to hug him but he's not that interested uh, so he's the uh, official HKU puppy ambassador a uh, kind of a therapy kind of dog and if you're lucky when you're in campus you might meet him because he comes out for the evening strolls but he's actually a bit old right now so I don't really know how frequently he comes out for the evening strolls so in general Hall life is all about um, uh, meeting friends and having fun time with your hallmates, meeting people from different cultures and backgrounds. And um, so I could only talk about the international halls, but um, for, going forward, there'll be two more people who will be speaking about the non, the local halls other than these two. And the next point I would like to talk about is the restaurants on campus. So restaurants is one of the most important thing, at least for me, because I can't survive without food. Uh, so I've just listed down a few one few of my favorite restaurants on campus. In total, we have about 16-ish restaurants in both the campuses, and both these campuses are interconnected through a footbridge. And uh, because, so I'm from India, and I'm a pure vegetarian, so I don't really eat um, meat or egg or so, those sorts of things. And the good thing about 
the restaurants and in HKU is that all of every single one of these restaurants have vegetarian options. So I didn't really struggle with finding food. However, we also we have this restaurant called Beecha's Vegetarian. It's hundred percent vegetarian, and uh, you get um, really nice vegetarian food there. It's on the Centennial campus. In general, we have all sorts of cuisine at HKU campus. We have like Indian at Ebenezer's. We have Italian at Delifrance. We have Asian at Pan Asian and Chinese at uh, CYM Maxim's Canteen. And um, overall, I I if I'm not wrong, you would need twenty five to 35 Hong Kong dollars to get a meal, which is pretty cheap because if you go outside the same restaurants like Ebenezer's outside is like 45 minimum $40. So that's really expensive for university university students because we are on a budget. So the restaurants, so you don't really have to worry about food. It's pretty good here. And you can also cook sometimes if you want to. And last I would be talking about exploring Hong Kong. So because I came from India and it was my first time in Hong Kong, it was, um, I was really excited to explore Hong Kong. And so the first part I would suggest you all do is explore all the islands. So Hong Kong has many tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny islands across, all across. The problem is that there are so many that you will not be able to cover them at, in one semester. So start, start slow and like be cons consistent. And most of these islands are all near the big Hong Kong Island, which is where our university is, HKU is on the Hong Kong Island. And it's really convenient to go to all these small islands from HKU because you can either take a ferry, you can take MTRs, or you can take a bus if you're if you're into bus rides. And these islands have a lot of cultural heritage sites and uh, tourist spots, so it's more of a touristy experience. And second is shopping. So I enjoy shopping, and uh, Hong Kong is known for the extravagant shopping experience. You have like few places which are known for the branded shopping. You shop for big brands, etc. And few are like thrift shopping. So you don't really have to choose. You can go to any one of these. You have a lot of options. And uh, so one of the places where you can, do, you can do thrift shopping is Mong Kok. So it's not on Hong Kong Island, but the other side of Hong Kong. Uh, so Mong Kok is also known for its street food. Even though I'm a vegetarian, I was able to try some of the vegetarian street foods and they were really nice. And uh, I was, I never thought that I would be able to find vegetarian street food in Hong Kong, but you have a lot of vegetarian options. And these are all something which are, which have been sold in Hong Kong for decades. So very traditional, you, you get to taste a lot of flavor in all of these. And the most interesting part about Hong Kong, which I looked forward to the most while coming while joining HKU was the nightlife and partying. I think most of us are excited for that. And uh, one of the most famous partying district, many people would know is LKF, that is Lang Kwai Fong, which is in Central. And it's like two stations away from HKU, so it's not even that far. It's pretty convenient to go. And because like Hong Kong is a very safe place, right? So you don't really have to worry about, uh, oh, it's nighttime, I can't really go. And MTRs usually, um, our, I think they function till 12, if I'm not wrong, 12 in the night. So it's pretty convenient. You can go and then come back whenever you want. You have taxis. It's very safe. And uh, yeah, so party, I think for my whole first semester was like, the only thing I remember is partying and studying a bit, but you have to manage both. And uh, trekking. So I think that I included that in the Hong Kong islands, but most of these islands and even within Hong Kong, you have um, tons of trekking trails and hiking and camping spots. So you will not really get bored. You can use your weekends to just go and explore the beauty and nature. You have places where you have like really nice views of Hong Kong, the bird's eye view kind of stuff. And um, lastly, I would like to also talk about the uh, traditional festivals and holidays in Hong Kong. So I have been, I was in Hong Kong for like eight to nine months. So over there, we, um, I was there during the mid autumn festival and the Christ, um, Chinese New Year. So both of these, um, even though we had coronavirus, uh, Chinese New Year was actually really fun in Hong Kong because they had these carnivals set up and you have these sales going on, going on. you have these small events and uh, you, they have these shows where they show you dragon, the dragon dance kind of thing. And it's really fun to watch all those. You, learn, you get to experience the Hong Kong culture firsthand, which is not really possible during other times because you're busy with your coursework or like trying to explore Hong Kong. So in general, it would be nice if you could try to cover Hong Kong. Try to do it as much as you can. Don't wait till the last moment. And 
I hope to see you see all of you in Hong Kong next semester. And if you have any drop doubts or any more questions, you can join our WhatsApp and Facebook groups where you have many other student ambassadors like me who are ready to answer your questions. Any any questions you have, be it small or big, don't hesitate to ask us. Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Hashita. And that was lovely. I think people can use your your uh, introduction to find ways to find a little good food in, in Hong Kong. So next, can we have Joey to share her experiences about this topic? Great. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, sorry. It's loading on my side, but yeah. Okay. Hi guys, uh, I'm Joey. I will be talking to you about hall dining and social life because these are the three most asked, uh, frequently asked things that I've encountered so far. So, a little bit of background on myself. Okay, I'm 20 years old. I'm from Malaysia, currently studying engineering science with a major in BMAT engineering. I currently live in Chisung College, have been for a year. So if you have any further questions after this, you can feel free to ask me. Okay, first thing. First thing I would like to talk about is actually hall life. So there are two main differences between all of HKU halls, and they are separated into traditional halls and non-traditional halls. As the name suggests, traditional halls are, are older. They have very strong hall cultures, such as their own cheers, their own, uh, I don't know, traditions. And they typically have events with other traditional halls, such as uh, sports competitions and dance competitions. Some examples of this may be St. John's College, Star Hall, or Weyland Hall. On the opposite end, there are the non-traditional halls, which are newer, have slightly better facilities, I would say, but they are further from campus. They are generally a little more chill and have events with other non-traditional halls. Same as traditional halls, we are a little bit like separated from traditional halls, I would say. So an example of this would be the Jockey Club Student Village 3 which consists of the four main colleges, which are Chisan College, New College, Lapchi, and Shunheng. All four of these colleges actually have their own characteristics. So for example, Chisan may be nurturing a community of freely inquiring minds, New College focuses on sustainability, Lapchi is about tradition, and Shunheng is about global citizens. You get the idea, right? Okay. About Chisan College, which I can talk about because, you know, I've only lived there so far. Uh, I can tell you a lot about it, about its envious lobbies, its mini theater, or its own library. But these are things you can actually just find online by hopping over to the Chisan College website. So I'll be telling you about its traditions of their daily life in Chisan, basically. First up is the orientation day. So orientation day is um, at the very start of the schooling year, typically like a week before uh, classes actually begin. It's to welcome the new students and allow you to meet people from your own hall. You guys get together and do fun challenges. I remember during my, my uh, orientation, there was something about, uh, you were given prompts, such as, imagine if your artificial intelligence system came alive. So we had to do like a song, a dance, or a drama, or poem about it. It was pretty fun. Uh, after that, you get a tour of the hall and also of the town, Kennedy Town, which uh, Jockey Cops in Village 3 is situated in. Um, and you, the seniors also typically give you like tips on how to survive in the hall. Yeah. Apart from that, one very special thing about Chisan is its tutorial team. The, tutor the tutors are actually live-in postgrad students who may or may not live in your floor. Some tutors take care of several floors and they mainly guard your hall affairs and mostly determines the character. So some, uh, for example, I had a pancake night on my floor, but my friend didn't. So it really depends on your hall tutor. Uh, these are the people that you can always go to for guidance and help. I remember my tutor was helping me with my personal statement. So yeah, don't be afraid of them. You can always approach them. High table dinners. These are just these are a staple of any HQU hall. It's when the whole hall gets together and dresses in like the green robes for undergraduates or the black robes for postgrads. Um, 
before dinner, you actually have like a distinguished speaker to come and talk about or give their thoughts on certain affairs. I remember during my first semester, the very prominent topic was the social movement in Hong Kong. So we had actually had Donald Sung, which was the second chief executive of Hong Kong, and the Honorable Mr. Justice Kamal Bakari. Uh, yeah. All of these speeches are actually recorded, so if you want to watch them, you can actually go to the Chitan YouTube channel. Apart from all of these, there are like thousands, okay, not thousands, but like a hundred other whole events that you can join. And they're mostly jointly organized with other uh, colleges. Some examples may be sports competition, Halloween night, drag night, hiking activities. Sometimes earlier on in the year, Chitan also organizes some lobby get-togethers for you to meet other new students. Um, there is always something to keep you occupied on the weekend, so don't worry about being bored. You can learn more about these activities through the Chisan Facebook, and all of these activities are sometimes linked with the student in initiatives. Um, these are separated into three broad, broad categories, but I'm not going to go into them. If you want to learn more, you can actually download the Chisan app, which was created by one of our coding clubs in the college. So apart from that, some frequent questions I've received is the transport and distance from campus, which I think Hashita actually covered. Uh, okay, for mixing with locals, personally, I did not find a problem with this because most of the locals in Chisan actually speak English and they are very, very friendly and always willing to help you out if you need. For cleaning and cooking facilities, um, all of the floors in the colleges are equipped with a pantry, which has a fridge, uh, a water fountain, a stove, and a microwave. Cleaning facilities include like your typical washing machine and dryer. And I, if I'm not wrong, only new college has an iron. So you may want to prepare for that if you, know, you do choose to live in uh, Jockey Club 3. For balancing hall life and study, I would say this one really depends on yourself. Some people like to overload on activities and some people generally prefer to stay in their rooms and study. Um, I would suggest that you have a balance of this because it may be important for your re-admission, but don't think about re-admission yet, that's too soon. Yes. So overall, I would say your whole life really depends on yourself and I would um, suggest to you to own your experience because what you do, uh, what you experience is your own initiative, you know? Yeah. Uh, so for dining in Hong Kong. So I was actually tasked with coming up with some off-campus food recommendations, but you know, everyone has a different taste. And, but these were some of the recommendations that came from like seniors before me. So uh, you can feel free to screenshot these. Uh, I'm pretty sure this recording will be put online, so don't worry about that. And the reason why I'm not going too in-depth into these is because there's actually an open rice app this is the Bible for finding good food. It's Hong Kong's most popular dining guide, and it's based on restaurant reviews written by locals. So you can be sure that you don't fall into like tourist traps. It covers a broad range of categories and also has many value added services. You can actually make your bookings, your take, uh, put take takeaways and have food offers on this app. Uh, yes, like I said, highly recommend you to download this app because it is the compendium of finding good food in Hong Kong. Lastly, uh, about social life in HKU. One of the biggest mistakes I made in my first semester was paying too much attention on my studies and not taking enough time to explore Hong Kong. So I would suggest that you don't make the same mistake. Studies are great, but the reason why you go overseas is to you know, experience a whole new country. From my little time in Hong Kong, I can tell you there is seriously something for everyone. If you like the city, you can go to Sinta Soi, which is on the left, and enjoy the views of the pier. If you like hiking, you can go to Sai Kong, a very beautiful place, practically in the middle of nowhere. Um, or if you like the beach or barbecue with friends, you could always go to Stanley, which is about a 20-minute drive away from Jockey Club Susan Village Street. Other than that, um, my primary advice for surviving university is don't forget to make friends. Like it or not, they will be the ones stuck with you for the next four years, and they are very important for you to keep your sanity and to introduce you to new things. Going to a theme park is fun by yourself, but it's even better if you go with friends. And lastly, another tip I would have is to join clubs and societies because these enrich your university life. Um, typically, a lot of people join activities on, in their hall, 
but you there are also like ton, tons of activities on campus and for example i joined isaac right i got to meet people from all different universities such as uh chinese u uh ust and uh yeah further on because we have many conferences and you get to meet all these like-minded people and it's just generally pretty, pretty great to fill up your weekends and know more about hong kong's culture so that's it for me. If you have any questions, you can, like Hashita said, join our WhatsApp group. Uh, but yeah, if you, yeah, any questions, just don't, feel free to ask us. Thank you. Hello, Joey. And last one, we have a boy to share his experiences. And can we have Pranay? Hi. 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 Uh, uh, yeah, just a sec. Okay. And he's going to show you all a little videos to visualize your life. That's good. Okay, is it is it visible? It is. Okay, great. It's working. Okay, hi guys. Uh, I'm Prana. A little bit of introduction about me. Um, I'm majoring in computer science. I'll be declaring computer science in my next year. I'm from India. I'm in year one. And I live at Lapchi College, which is one of the four colleges at the Jockey Club Student Village 3. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Lapchi a little bit. Um, so it's very close to HKU, and um, it's 10 to 15 minutes if you include the walk and the MTR duration, because um, it's located on a little bit of a hill, so you have a climb up or down, so it can be tedious sometimes, but it's all right. It's your daily workout. Like, that's how I think of it. Uh, so it's 10 to 15 minutes from campus and you come down to the Kennedy Town Station and straight away you are you reach the HKU station because HKU has its own MTR stop. So it, it doesn't take too much time to move around. Okay, so general facilities that are available and this I think is standard to almost all halls. Um, so the laundry room, uh, common room, um, music room, etc. that's available in most of the halls, I think. Um, music room, dance room, study room, these are specific to Lapchi actually. Uh, but other halls located in the Chalky Club Student Village 3 also have some of their own special rooms. So on each floor, you have roughly 10 to 11 rooms, but it could be more, it could be less, depending on how many rooms are double or how many are single on that floor. Uh, and each floor has a pantry and each floor has a bathroom of its own. And on one floor, you will have only one gender living. So this is just in general. Um, all, most of the Chalky Club Student Village 3, that is the, um, that's the, uh, residential colleges, uh, they try to maintain a one is to one is to one ratio between international mainland and local students. This is a, this is a general uh, thing which they try to maintain. However, obviously the numbers could differ from year to year. So the, the idea is that um, the residential colleges provide a really uh, international environment for all students where you could mingle with people from um, all over. Uh, okay. Uh, then, okay, let's talk about the clubs and activities that Lapchi has to offer. So as we all spoke about it, the high table dinners, this is again a traditional at Lapchi as well. And yeah, it's basically you'll be wearing fancy clothes. You will, um, Lapchi has this thing where you'll be wearing, the guys will wear bow ties and the girls will have ribbons. And um, I was lucky enough to uh, actually host uh, the second high table dinner. And um, yeah, I'll show you a small video of how it is. I'm sorry, you can't hear the audio but this is how it looks. So you will have a really big assortment of dishes and um, you can have, uh, I think there's wine and there's juice um, for your liquids and otherwise, yeah, this is, it's basically a really, I think it's a traditional of Hong Kong universities because I think it comes from the UK tradition. And so you would find this more specifically only at universities in Hong Kong. At least all the halls at the Jockey Club Student Village 3 have this every month. Okay, so other clubs, for example, we have Pancake Morning and Pizza Night at La uh, Lachi, where um, we have, I think, every alternate month we have Pancake Morning, and at the other months we have Pizza Night, like once, um, once a month. And this is organized by the Lachi College Ambassador Program, so there you can see me making pancakes for people. And yeah, it's, it's early in the morning, and everyone comes down with their own uh, plates and stuff, and you start <laughs> your served pancakes by us. Uh, there is the joint college dance team, and this is an inter, um, like, so all four colleges or all three colleges 
uh, Shun Heng, Chi Sun, and Lapchi, a uh, former joint college dance team. And uh, you, you have additions and you can, once you get in, you basically perform at different events that happen in the residential colleges. And so it's a really fun way for you to, you know, express whatever your interests are. And I like dancing, so I, I joined this club. And it's great because you have practice twice a week. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Lapchi also has a CrossFit uh, training pro, uh, club where I think twice a week or once a week, I'm not exactly sure, they have um, training which is done. Uh, and uh, so it's a great way because of while we do not have a gym on uh, at the residential college, uh, we do have other, other things to do you know, for your physical workout. So now the other clubs, you can probably just glance through them. We have the Lapchi Tech Club, we have uh, the Music Society, Global, Global Diversity Club, and we have a bunch of sports club sports club. So whatever your interests are, I'm sure you will find it there. Or you could probably, if there's nothing which you like, you can probably start a club which you want to. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, dining and food. Um, so every floor has a pantry and a large fridge. And so you don't need to worry about like cooking because I tend to cook a lot because uh, as like Harshita, I myself, I'm a vegetarian as well. So I tend to cook um, a bunch of my meals or I eat on campus. So while cooking, you have two induction plates out there, which are there for you to uh, use. And once you buy your groceries and things, which are available at stores, like right around um, your, uh, right around the campus or right around your residence, there's park and shop, welcome. And there are other wet markets where you can go and buy local groceries. And so it's very easy and very convenient to, you know, do your cooking. And uh, I've honestly, whenever I've walked into the pantry, either it takes five minutes for the place to, for there to be space for me to cook, or like I can directly go and cook. So cooking is not a problem at all. Oh, this is a random video of me doing the dishes. I don't know why I included it, but yeah. Anyways, okay, let's, um, let's talk about social life, the fun stuff. Okay, so um, there is definitely a partying and drinking culture. And um, 18 is the drinking age, if any of y'all are wondering. Most of y'all will be fine. So, um, okay, so then you have other adventure activities, hiking, cy hiking cycling. Um, then you, you can attend social events, which are organized by the university. So you'll have different clubs organizing different events, things like that. Um, you could uh, be parting, or you could participate in hall and society activities, which is what most of us tend to do. You could go out for food or you could chill at the harbor because uh, the harbor is like extremely close to um, the residents. So almost, I, I think the harbor is close to almost anywhere in Hong Kong. So you can easily find a harbor. People go there, they bring a few drinks and they just listen to music and chill there. Uh, these are some videos of the club life in Hong Kong. So I just wanted you guys to get some idea of how fun it could be. I mean, this is just in general to show you a little bit about I'm sorry, bear with me for not having the audio. Okay, so um, other things that you can do. So what I did was, I think this is the last day which I was there in Hong Kong. We went, I went cycling in the new territory. New territories is, I don't mean like it's a new territory. It's basically a location in Hong Kong towards the north of Hong Kong where it's more serene. So you're away from the you know usual hub up and the um, fast paced life of Hong Kong. And out here it's much more serene and beautiful. And this was a cycling thing that me and my friends had gone for. Uh, this is a small clipping to show you um, how uh, I guess how beautiful Hong Kong can be when you look at it from the nature's point of view. Yeah, I'd gone for uh, hiking and cycling, I mean, hiking and canoeing as well. And these are just, yeah, these are activities which anyone can go for. And the, uh, the hiking event was actually organized by the International Society. Uh, this uh, Eat Together program is organized by HKU where they pair up international students with um, uh, one local student and another international student and a local family. So you actually, and you get to go to the local family's house and they prepare a meal for you and you get to, you know, have a local traditional meal. So while I was vegetarian that day, I decided not to be because there was pretty much nothing prepared, which is vegetarian. So I really did have to go in. Um, this was really fun because I got to meet a lot of interesting people and hear like several interesting stories and things like that. Uh, other than that, you can travel and explore Hong Kong and Hong Kong is extremely beautiful. I mean, that, that's one of the harbors which is located, as you can see, it's called the Simsha Shui Harbor. And the picture on the left is the Victoria Peak. I, this, is a, this is a very uh, traditional and a very iconic picture of Hong Kong. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. And uh, feel free to ask any other questions that you guys have. And yep, uh, I guess uh, over to you, Sissy. Okay, thank you, Pranay. Uh, it's a shame that his video about the clubbing is not working. Otherwise, we'll turn this session into a party. Okay, so thank you, thank you, all three lovely ambassadors. Um, 
So now we have the Q&A sessions. I, I know that you've been asking questions a lot in the chat room, but now you have uh, opportunities to ask in person. So uh, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Yes, we have one. So hi, um, hi, Ling Yun. Um, um, yes. um, um, because the, I'm still concerned about the, uh, uh, the uh, cancellation of the CIE test because uh -huh. I am the candidate for, uh, for A-level curriculum. Um, still, I have two courses without the certain score and two courses with certain score, which I have already uploaded. But uh, um, I do not know uh, what's the following arrangement for, uh, for, uh, for Hong Kong U to uh, make an evaluation for next mm -hmm. two, two courses because the, the exam was canceled. Okay, I think... Um some of the students share the same concern and they worry, same as you do, because um, we don't really have a, like I said before, we re really don't have a concrete or specific solutions or, or any arrangements according to the cancellation. So what we have right now is we allow people like students to upload their materials flexible, flexibly. So they they do not have to like upload necessary documents or require documents uh, before the deadline. So once you have the result or grades, you upload to us and we start the uh, like offering procedure. So you don't need to worry about when you should upload the documents or 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 uh, like what um, like what like timeline. So you just need to stay with us. Uh, and to check constantly to the website that I share in the chat room. And for, may I suggest that um, the questions that you raise in this session were only about the topics that we share, because you have a lot of the inquiry channels to ask questions, uh, like the WhatsApp groups or Facebook or even WeChat for mainland students. So uh, let's focus more on the dining hall and social life. So you can have like, let, I mean, in the short term, like to be relaxed a little bit right now in this session and to focus more on the life part of the Hong Kong U. Because for the cancellation, that's there. It's nothing we can do. We have to wait, just wait for university to make decisions. So you have to stay with us for that. But in this session, you have the opportunity to interact with our student ambassadors. So I would suggest more on that. Um, okay, so I will have um, a Varel. Uh, Hi. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that there were other methods of inquiry, uh, which you named the WeChat and the other social media groups. What if you're uh, like a hermit that doesn't use any methods of social media? What's the uh, like method of email? Is there a mailing list I can join? I think you can still like answer, uh, ask questions via email. Okay. What yeah. email should I direct my inquiries to? Like what email re receive like uh, offers or, oh, oh, okay. So if you log on the hku.hk slash international, there'll be a contact us. Okay. So you can leave your questions there and we have callers to get back to you. Thank that you. will be the easiest way to ask questions via email. Is that okay? Yes. Mm. But yeah. Maybe you can start thinking about using social media channels. My phone does not support such advanced procedures. Oh. Okay, no problem. <laughs> you can ask questions via email. You still have that. <laughs> That's the Okay, so. I, wanted to, um, uh, so I just wanted to clarify one question that oh. people tend to have, uh, which is about the difference in the readmission part between um, uh, residential halls and residential colleges. 
and mm-hmm. uh, the idea the general thing is that if so okay so my advice for someone when you're applying which one like which one to choose residential hall or residential college is that it's easier to get readmitted into a residential hall than the residential colleges but that's based on how active you are so if you think that as a student yourself that you are someone who likes to be involved in activities and wants to you know be part of the organizing team or you know likes doing these kind of things then i would suggest the residential colleges uh but if you are someone who you know doesn't want to you know always put yourself out there and things like that i mean that's all up to you of course so if you're not someone like if you're someone who's not that active like your personal personally you don't want to be that active uh then i suggest uh choosing a residential hall if you're worried specifically about readmission um because that is a concern that people tend to have that's one of the concerns that i had before applying and i decided to choose residential colleges because i knew that personally i like to be involved in different activities and so i went with that i hope that clarifies um questions about readmission but and this, the difference um at least specific to readmission between the residential halls and the residential colleges and yeah we can go back to the questions uh, for other people okay lovely um so we have what what was sick oma um uh, thank you uh, good afternoon everyone so i had this question about the visa procedure uh, could you please elaborate on how do we apply for visas and what can hq do for us for the visa procedures oh for the visa application uh actually we are waiting for the confirmation from the visa team to finalize the uh procedures of visa application so basically um um we I mean we will start the whole procedure in like late April or early May. So um and we are going to send an email regarding to this uh issue as well to to all of the offer May students. And also uh you can have the um a specific link about this visa application on hku.hk uh, hku and u website. So once we finalize all the procedures we are going to publish on that website. And right. maybe like um maybe um Hashita you can share a little bit more experience on your visa application or Joey or Pranay. Um yeah so I actually received my um conditional sorry the firm offer around May so it was actually pretty late but I don't think I had a problem with the visa so it's pretty quick you apply and then you get your visa in about 3 to 4 weeks so don't really worry about that part so once they tell you to apply um they will confirm i'm pretty sure hku will send an email with the updates regarding the visa because there are travel restrictions as i as i've seen so once they send you the email just apply uh, a day or two after that and you will receive your visa so don't have a problem don't think that the timing will be problem just wait for the confirmation from hk you said yeah uh if wasn't the process um simple like you, do you not just have to upload your personal details and documents and then hku takes care of it because that's how it was for me as far as i remember because i just had to upload my documents and hku handled the entire visa process yeah exactly so hku will send you a mail and then according to that you just uh, whatever uh, information yeah. they require just give that so it's really simple it's, the process should, shouldn't be that confusing just the part of getting confirmation from hku might take a few days a few weeks to come yeah. yes uh, we have a question about do we receive a hong kong id with a visa i think you uh, no so once you go to hong kong uh, within like the first 10 days you will have to get an appointment with the immigration office which is, which is in the same island hong kong island but at wan chai so you get you go to their website get an app, uh, appointment so for which ever day or time it's convenient for you and just go there on that day with all the documents required do the interview and in 10 days you will have to go collect your hong kong id it is it's not pretty, yeah it's a pretty straightforward process and it's not necessarily 10 days try to do it as early as possible but uh, you don't need to worry about that yeah i think you'll figure it out with uh, yeah miss excuse me uh, do we need to submit our passports for the visa I think that's uh, one of the requirements right because uh, on isn't there a portal where you have where you see what all documents are required and you have to upload it out there because I think that's what it was for me as far as I remember and I, there should be a passport uh, place where you can upload your passport um, scan as well or you don't have to send your physical passport or anything like that I mean my passport is submitted in one embassy that is why I'm asking this question 
Or do you have a scan of it? I think you just have uh, a I do have scan. The, I do have a scan copy of the. I mean, will, yeah, will I think that should it? be all right. I think that should be all right. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. Sure. Uh, one more thing that I want to add about visa applications is make sure that you uh, put up your visa, visa application like a ample time before you actually leave for Hong Kong. Because uh, the, the problem for most of us in Malaysia was that we received our results pretty late and we didn't know that we could apply with our conditional offers. So we only received our visa once upon entering Hong Kong. And in this case, you will actually need to cross the border and and come back to activate your visa and you don't want to do that so make sure you apply on time you can apply with the conditional offer so just go ahead and do it yeah, don't waste time definitely. very good point yes apply with with conditional offer is also okay so uh we have ruth yeah hi um I had a question regarding the MUN club. So do they compete internationally or locally or both? Because I'm pretty interested in that. Uh, so I think I spoke to someone who was in the MUN club and uh, I was interested in it as well before I came, but I'm not particularly sure if they are very active still, like the MUN club of HKU. I think they have a Facebook page as well. Let me try and find it for you. But I don't, I don't particularly have information of anyone else. Oh, okay. Them. So uh, one of my friends is a part of the MUN uh, club. So I think he was in the first year and first year, second semester, and he was sent to um, Spain, if I'm not wrong. So um, it's not really, you won't have like every month kind of activities, but once a year or so, or once a semester, if you're lucky, you will have international competitions like the Harvard, the the actual Harvard man yeah. and you go to uh -huh. different countries to compete so don't worry about that you can become a part of the official committee too where you can uh, like find out places which are organizing these man competi MUN competitions and uh, join that get your team to join it so um, that shouldn't be a problem it's it's fine I've so added the I link as well if you want to check the Facebook page thank you hmm. no, regarding the uh, MUN uh, again does HKU have its own model UN conference that, you know, you could organize potentially? Yeah, well, yeah, they do have in-house uh, MUN um, competitions and small, they have multiple committees in-house too. So I think once you can directly ask more questions because since none of us are a part of the committee, we wouldn't know in details about these information, but you can uh, directly ask them. I'm pretty sure they will answer your questions quickly, yeah. Check the Facebook page and find like a chat option if they have something. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So are there any more questions? Um, some people are asking about what's the difference between the four residential colleges. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's like a big debate. Everyone is like, this is better than that. But like all the four, uh, all the four uh, residential colleges have like unique features. So like there's this thing called New College. None of us are from New College, but New College is more into uh, nature and sustainability, etc. And Chisan is more about international and fancy events. They have all these pretty, pretty events. And Lapchi is um, is very. We have fun. a lot of fun activities. Yeah, that's all I can say. Activities. Like we we don't we don't have like the okay we don't have like a fancy lobby and stuff, but we have a lot of fun activities. I think we're the yeah. only ones that have like pancake morning and pizza night. Yeah, so they have fun activities and Shanim is just chill. So you just go there. Just have a good time. You'll have an event once in a month, twice in a month. It's very chill. So all college, all colleges have their own vibe. And when you go through their uh, website, you'll get to know the vibe. So just see which one matches with your vibe. Just go with that. So that's why we suggest you to check on our HKU and U website because we have a, like a unique page for the whole, like the general information for all the halls and colleges. So you can see what's the unique uh, vibe for each of the dorms that you like. Uh, I would like to know how orientation would be with that. Um, about the orientation, um, I don't think it will be canceled as of yet, but if the COVID continues, I'm not so sure. Uh, we, even though there were protests going on during our time, we still had our orientation activities and it wasn't really a problem, it went pretty smooth. But non-locals and locals have two separate orientation activities because uh, if they do it together, there are just too many students to handle it. Mm -hmm. uh, so local students will have it, I think, one week before the non-local, uh, the international and non-local exchange students. So yeah, that's about orientation. Yes, uh, we have. Laura is asking about Chisan. Sorry, uh, Laura is asking about uh, Chisan College interviews. Yes, that's true. 
Uh, typically, the interviews are pretty chill for first year students, but I have heard people getting rejected. Don't be too scared about it because what they really want to do is assess your uh, how fit you are for the college vision. So nurturing a community of freely inquiring minds, what does that mean to you? Uh, I said something along the lines of, um, you know, you want to broaden your horizons, learn more from like different levels of people in the college. So as long as you really stay true to yourself, it should be fine. Yes, and for like the orientation time or like enrollment time, uh, we have not yet got any uh, information about the delay or something just keep what what it is what it should be right now but if we have like um, any more changes we will we'll publish online on the website so you can check on the website about the information wow I it seems like Cam you is going to list uh, a lot of questions about horse <laughs> yeah do you just yeah. want to ask do you just want to ask it like using your mic yeah can can you can you you can raise your hands we we can omit you to ask your list of questions let me find where are you can, can you hi can you want hello yeah. it's not working i think i i omit him Okay, so I think he's busy typing questions. Um, okay, so any more questions? Uh, I think many people had this. Oh, I think someone asked a question. Okay, but many people had this question about if first year students get placed into which hall and what kinds of hall. But uh, in the hall application, this list your first three preferences, and HQ has this policy where all the first year students will get a place. So if not for the first three, Sometimes, like rare cases, you might get placed into some other halls, but don't worry, you can try to your try to reapply for your original hall next semester, next next semester or next year. So uh, all of you will get placed into one hall or another. 